Hello, my name is Eva Marcus, and I would like to welcome to this webinar about valuing water, where we would like to introduce you to a software product called VASP. There will be a time for questions at the end of this presentation. You can write your questions in the question box in your GoToWebinar control panel. Also, if you have, uh, would like to have some handouts, you can find them in the handouts box in your GoToWebinar platform. So uh, now we'll just start. Well, we'd like to tell you about, uh, give you an introduction to VESP, which is a program for organizing river data and uh, hydrological modeling. And uh, my name is Eva Marcus. I'm a senior project manager and uh, also a freshwater biologist uh, in Denmark. I work with uh, streams, both uh, administration and also uh, making projects. And my colleague, Matthias. Hello, uh, my name is Matthias Jepsen. I am a civil engineer with a uh, with, uh, within hydraulics and, and uh, modeling of water. And I also work with uh, 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 nature restoration projects and rivers and streams uh, primarily. Thank you. So um, I'll just give you the, uh, the agenda of our presentation today. We'd like to give you a background for why uh, VASP was made and also some highlights of the main functions in, in VASP and also some technical details of the software. WASP is a desktop software system which is owned by WSP. It was made in the, the core of the, the software was made in the 1980s and since then it has, it has grown by budding uh, in whenever there was the need of a, of a, of a tool, it was developed. Uh, we use uh, VASP mainly for admin administration and modeling of streams and rivers. We have sold the program to about 75% of the municipalities in Denmark. So alongside being a, a tool in, internal, it also is a tool used by many uh, administrators in the municipalities. Uh, VASP has a unique design and structure. It's very easy to use and easy to have an overall view. You can organize and store all kinds of relevant data in a database. You can make assessments and perform calculations uh, on, on different projects. And these calculations and projects can be visualized in and re the results on longitudinal and cross-sectional profiles on a built-in GIS platform and in some other ways. There are many general and specific tools and functions in VESP. Show you some of the most important tools we have. The functionality of VESP is that, as I said, we have a good built-in storage of basic data. You can uh, storage surveys of the river, many surveys from different years. You can storage management profiles and also data you can use when you make your calculations, catchment area, hydrometric data, etc. These data can then be used when you design the stream restoration or wetland project, for example. And uh, there are built-in tools where you can modify the physical habitat of the river uh, or make your the future design of this river, uh, which is uh, the wished future design. Then you can evaluate the consequences of this project. You can calculate the water level in the river, but also the effect on the water level in adjacent areas, for example, in natural habitats. And this way you can evaluate the effects on these natural habitats, whether they will be, be benefited or, or they will be uh, ruined by this, these changes. Also, there are tools where you, for example, can evaluate the risk of bank erosion and flooding. As I said, we can organize data in a database and we have a navigator. We call it a navigator in BESP where we have the overall view of the, uh, where, the how we can get to our data. 
uh, as I said, many of our clients are the municipals in, in Denmark. So we have the upper part of this tree is the municipalities, but it could be the region or a state. Under each municipality, we have the general river systems. And under each system, there are a more detailed river system. And under each of these, all the tributaries, the specific rivers are listed. And we have highlighted one of the, the rivers, Tustrup Bake. And you can see on the right side that you can get an overview of which data do we have on this river. And it could be, for example, the projects we have made or survey data from many different years, the regulatory river designs, which hydrological data do we have and calculations, etc. <clears throat> if we go and look at the structure of, of a survey of a stream, we can see we have the data, each of the measured points on the left side. And on the right side, we can see a longitudinal profile of our survey. Each of these points that have been measured in the survey can be seen on this right side. We have uh, selected a cross section and you can see where it is it's placed on our survey and also in the on the bottom side you can see a cross sectional profile at this point and you can see that each point that has been measured across the the cross sectional and if you open you can come further in and be more detailed and you can see which level and and more uh, up, more um, information about each point Um, VASP includes a uh, simulation engine where river flow, water level, uh, resistance, velocity, erosion potential, and much more can be calculated. VASP simulates in steady state, which means that it cannot include dynamic variations in time or any complex structures. However, it calculates everything very fast in seconds rather than hours, as is the case with normal dynamic modeling software. This approach has its limitations. However, the main purpose of VASP is to analyze general events within the river system, such as average, such an, as an average summer event, and is applicable in most cases, but not all. Uh, use of the calculation engine in VASP requires, like all other simulation engines, such as HECRAS or the MIC package, a professional with knowledge of the underlying methodology and uh, model uncertainty and limitations of the model they're working with. In this example we've shown here, we have a longitudinal profile from a, a, a tool we call the Interactive Longitudinal Profile Viewer um, of a surveyed river system where we've made two calculations of the water level uh, during a high flow event shown in light blue and a low flow event shown in dark blue. Um, through this tool, visualization tool, we can compare rivers, designs, and results very quickly without much prior setup. And uh, similarly to what Eva showed before in the other tool, we can select a certain point within the river, shown here with a vertical yellow line, and get data from that point in a mini window uh, shown in the bottom hand, uh, right hand corner. Um, VASP includes many tools where results and data can be uh, visualized easily and where comparisons can be made between data and results. Uh, in this example, we see a longitudinal profile of a river where a survey uh, was recently done. Uh, the river bed is seen in uh, a black line. Uh, we have then created some planned future designs in which the river bed is slightly altered, seen here with a red line. Uh, this new design has an effect on the general water level, which we, which might be of interest to uh, the client or any landowner near the river. Um, through VASP, we can then easily calculate this change and communicate the consequences of the planned design. Uh, below the longitudinal profile, we can see a delta plot, which shows the change in water levels before and after the implementation of the planned design along the river.
Apart from visualization tools, VASP also includes hundreds of specialized river calculation and design tools, which have been developed through over 30 years of projects and client feedback. Um, in the following slides, I will introduce just a few of the many uh, specialized modeling tools which can be found within VASP. Uh, on this current slide, uh, you see a graph representing the yearly variations in river resistance, uh, in this case represented through the Manning's number. Uh, without getting too te technical about this parameter, it's often uh, notoriously difficult to determine correctly. Um, therefore, we've created automated ways of calculating this parameter from measured flow and water level data in the stream, uh, which is shown in this plot uh, from the black line. Uh, and from this automated calculation, we can generate a seasonal model uh, describing uh, the river resistance uh, shown in red. Another specialized and useful tool in VASP is the ability to calculate the consequences in flooding and erosion from a river. VASP includes tools to quickly assess this risk and create visualizations of the results. Uh, on this slide on the left hand side, uh, we see an area that is affected by flooding due to uh, the new urban, uh, due to uh, a, an urbanization upstream uh, and the change in flow dynamics which this has caused. Uh, through VASP, we can calculate the flood risk of these events and minimize the risk of flood damage by implementing uh, remedial measures. On the right hand side, we see a stretch of river. Where, a, uh, where different flow events might cause an increase in river erosion. Uh, we calculate this risk from a parameter called stream power. Uh, the center line of the river is vectorized and results from different calculation scenarios are offset from the center line. So in this case, you see four lines representing four different calculations of the stream power uh, at different events. Uh, in this case, we see that areas where there's currently low potential of erosion, seen with a dark blue or blue line, may become at risk of bank erosion, seen in the offset with the red line, uh, with a change in flow dynamic at higher stream powers. VASP also includes a built-in GIS platform where we can visualize river data and digitize plant design uh, <clears throat> for direct implementation. This feature uh, eliminates the need to switch between VASP and a third party uh, GIS platform when designing and changing uh, things in the river. The GIS platform includes a large range of very specialized GIS tools for river analysis and design. Uh, but also includes uh, the normal tools one might expect from a functional GIS platform. A few examples of these uh, specialized GIS tools might be automated generating of uh, river cross sections from a digital elevation model or a tool set for flooding or flow tracing or earthworks. On this example, we, I'll give a quick example of the Earthworks tool, where we can, uh, where we have um, some tools implemented in the GIS platform, uh, where we can design uh, rivers directly into the digital elevation model. Uh, in this example, we have a channeled river where we'd like to reintroduce some natural meanders in a restoration project. In the uh, VASP GIS platform, we can implement these changes directly into the DEM and the visualized results at any point of the river through the in-app uh, profiling tool. So I've drawn a line here and then we get a cross-sectional uh, profile of the results of our DEM where you can see the surveyed riverbeds shown in a blue line. It might be a bit unclear, but if there's a blue line on the left uh, riverbed and then we have our designed riverbed to the right. Um, we can also do earthworks calculation on this result and estimate the amount of soil we need to fill in the existing river and dig in the uh, designed river in order to create uh, the future designed riverbed. Uh, 
Um, the final example I have here is uh, uh, that VASP also includes methods to estimate the water levels, not just within a river, but also in the surrounding landscape uh, through extrapolation and uh, algorithms and the implementation of a digital elevation model. We can uh, estimate the river's effect on the surrounding groundwater table close to terrain. Um, this tool is often used uh, when we need to communicate uh, a, uh, an effect of a change in the river to uh, landowners with farmland close to the river. Uh, if you plan to make any changes within the river that may interfere with their drainage of their fields and thereby the yield of their crops. Or it might be of interest to any public agencies if natural habitats are affected in a positive or ne negative way due to the plan designs we've implemented. And there are many other ways we can visualize the data and results of our from uh, VASP. We have, for example, in the long longitudinal profile, we can make some some profile, some appendixes or some uh, profiles that are very uh, nice in appearance. Uh, there's a very easy design setup where where there are many options. You can decide which data you would like to. Uh, to compare or to show. So there's an easy way to the data structure. Uh, there's a possibility to make a uh, descriptive text in the top uh, left co corner. As I said, you can use it as an appendix to a, a, a report to your client. There's a extensive legend setup where you also can decide which text and which color or line type and much more you would like to have in your presentation. When you print this uh, longitudinal profile, it's actually accurate, has an accurate scale. <clears throat> In the same way, we also can visualize data and results on a cross-sectional profile. In this example, we show you a, a stream uh, where the, the dark black line is the surveyed river, and then you have shown that you would like to change the uh, change the um, slopes of the stream and make it more flattened. And uh, many of these uh, visualizations you can use to talk to landowners about the project you are you you propose to make. So now I'd like to summarize our presentation. We have shown you, uh, told you about our software product called VASP, where we have many possibilities for presentation and visualization of data and results. It's possible to design future restoration projects. Uh, you can make many different kinds of calculations and um, have a, an, a, an examination of the effects of these uh, projects. We have a built-in GIS platform also with many different tools that can be used in these calculations. And among that, we have many specialized modeling tools, um, which have been, as I said before, developed during time whenever there was a, the, the need for a new tool, it was possible to, uh, to make them. As and uh, before we go to the question and answer uh, time, I'd just like to remind you that uh, we have other other webinars about in this valuing water theme, and we hope you will join us in in these presentations. So thank you for listening, and uh, now we'd like to hear if you have any questions. Thank you, Eva, for a great presentation. Thank you, Matthias. Um, so be before moving into the Q&A period, I would like to remind attendees to enter your questions in the question box on the GoToWebinar platform. And also you can download the PDF version of the presentation from the handout box on the dashboard. Uh, we move to the first question. Uh, if you can please discuss uh, advantages of uh, VASP over softwares like uh, HIC HICRAS, uh, Flood Modeler, or S3. 
Uh, yeah. Um, firstly, I'd like to just say that the BASP has a completely different approach and was designed with a completely different mindset um, than the modeling software, which you just mentioned, uh, HECRAS and Flood Modeler and S3. And uh, might as well include the mic package in that. Um, with with WASP, the main focus has been municipality work. It's been uh, communication and administration of rivers, uh, where the main focus of HECRAS and Flood Modeler model is to give accurate uh, calculations and have a very deep understanding of the um, of the river system and can calculate to a very high degree of accuracy. Um, in BASP, we use what's called a steady state uh, uh, calculation uh, versus what you can make uh, dynamic simulations in the others. The others can do uh, steady state as well. Um, but the, um, the way we just use VASP is that it's steady state, which means there's some limitations, as I mentioned earlier. But um, it also is very accurate if you know how to use it and when to use it. Uh, plus, it includes a, a ton of specialized tools for, for river simulation and design. Um, and the work workflow, especially, is where you have the advantages, where it's very easy and very fast to implement designs and exploring new ideas within the, within WASP uh, compared to other uh, simulation programs, in my experience. Thank you. Uh, next question. How fast is the calculation engine and how accurate are the results? Um, I might have answered just a little bit of that uh, in the in the uh, in the previous question, but the, the short answer is that they're very fast. It's a steady state uh, calculation, which means that simulations take seconds rather than at the hours which it would normally take in a in a dynamic model. Um, the calculations are very ac accurate as long as you know uh, what the uncertainties and limitations of the model is. So you need to do the calculations in the correct system or uh, need to know when it's applicable and when it's not. Um, you cannot invest simulate events which require any dynamic input uh, or control, but it's perfect for um, general events such as normal flow in natural rivers. Uh, uh, the quick uh, calculation times gives opportunities for creating many uh, scenarios fast and exploring new ideas in a fast pace. So it's it's ideal when when in the uh, it can be ideal through the entire process of designing a river, but especially ideal in in the very beginning stages where you're exploring new ideas as well. Thank you. Uh, next question: Does uh, VASP have a contaminant? tracing capability, for example, of uh, farmland fertilizer tracking in water course or channels to receiving uh, water bodies lake. So we're, we're talking about uh, pollutants, uh, being able to trace pollutants in river systems. Uh, I is, did I understand that correctly? Yes, I believe so. OK. Um, well, you can calculate uh, different things in, the, in in you can make some hydrological calculations but it does not contain a pollutant uh, transportation uh, calcul calculator uh, in that sense but you can use it as a as a middleman for making that calculation it's not again it's it's a steady state um, calculator which means that if you have a varying uh, uh, outlet of, of pollutants and you want to trace that over time it's not possible to do in VASP. Thank you. Uh, next question. It sounds like uh, VASP has been used pr primarily for municipalities. Has it been leveraged or are you considering leveraging it for the private sector companies with water programs? Should I answer that? Um, well, VASP has also been sold to five uh, companies, uh, competitive companies, who use it uh, pretty much in the same way as we use it for projects and evaluation of different uh, yes, projects. So if I understand the question right, it is, it is also used by other competitive com companies. Thank you. Uh, next question, have you or would you consider including site photos to illustrate the changes in the river and stream uh, modeled? Sorry, I didn't quite uh, hear. Site photos? Uh, 
would you consider including site photos to illustrate the changes in the river and stream that are modeled? Actually, we, uh, we haven't told you about it, but we have a function that you can uh, store photos from your stream. For example, if you have taken photos while you are making your survey, it's possible to storage it and also to, uh, so it's, um, uh, it has, you, you know which position they are taken in. Yeah, so they you are can actually geotagged. Positioned, uh, so, yeah. 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 geotagged. So actually you can do it, follow the development in a stream in this way. There is actually a built-in platform where you can archive all your photos within VASP uh, to, uh, to make sure that you have the historical data as well for any photo you've taken throughout any period of time and then trace it back and know exactly which river and when it was taken and where it was. Fantastic, thank you. Uh, next question, can the model simulate water bodies like ponds or wetlands? Um, that's primarily uh, deals with rivers. There are some functionalities within the GIS, pro, uh, GIS uh, platform, which may be of use to any simulations of, of, of those types of water bodies, but it's not a, a primary um, concern of, of, of this program. Uh, you can do it uh, through some, some measures, but I would uh, require you to, to know some, some of the specialized things about VASP in order to do it. Uh, a general user, would, I wouldn't recommend it. Thank you. Uh, next question. Uh, does it calculate runoff flow from different rainfall events? And if so, which e equation? Um, VASP uh, doesn't, uh, you don't uh, get the input for uh, how much uh, the discharge within a river system is from a rainfall event in, in VASP. That is a, a, a different type of, of calculations of the catchment you make within the catchment and then see how it flows down to the river and that is not included in VASP. Uh, what we, in VASP we deal mainly with hydrometric data, so direct measurements of discharge and water levels within the stream. Uh, this, this might be Historically, it's because we in Denmark have a lot of data when it comes to rivers. Uh, we have many, uh, many uh, measuring stations throughout Denmark where we take these measurements. So there's not been the same degree of need for this type of um, this type of simulation engine. Um, but it also is a, a large there's a large uncertainty associated with that type of simulations. How much of the rainfall actually ends up in the river? Um, as you mentioned, which equation do you use? That could be a, a, a ton of difference. And uh, I would recommend using a different program to estimate that if, if, if you needed that input. Thank you. Uh, next question. What, does, uh, what drives the seasonal changes you indicated in the Manning coefficient? Are the VASP, uh, are the VASP modeling outcomes particularly sensitive to the changes indicated? Uh, yeah, I mean, as the resistance number of, of a river is very important to know. I mean, it's uh, it's one of the very very important parameters when modeling uh, uh, or making a correct modeling of of the water level within a stream. Uh, it's a very difficult uh, parameter to calculate, uh, primarily just because it's not something you can just go out and measure. It's it's something you have to calculate. Um, it's dependent on how much um, uh, plant life and other things is creating turbulence and resistance and, and energy loss within the river. Uh, so you have to calculate it and it can be, it can vary extremely much. It can vary within seasons, it can vary within the river system itself. Some places in the river may be in shade, other places may not and have a higher uh, degree of, of vegetation. It's, um, it's therefore we have created some, some good tools within VASP to assist in, uh, in that estimation. Thank you. There are many more questions here. I will take the last one and all additional questions will be answered directly uh, uh, by the presenters. Uh, can the calculation take into consideration, uh, sorry, can the, the calculation take into account dealing with tributary culvert or steward system? 
uh, to include potential effects and results of interactions. What about culverted lengths? Shall I read it again? Sorry. <laughs> uh, no, no, I, I think I understand it. Um, there's, you can implement point sources within uh, VASP where you can contribute uh, uh, covert or large uh, uh, sewer overflow systems uh, within, the, within uh, VASP to, uh, to implement large or, or point sources, which may have an effect. This is one of the ways uh, we calculate the uh, change in erosion, for instance, where uh, a new urbanized area may cause a different dynamic in, in, in the flow uh, and therefore change the risk of erosion or flooding. Um, when you say uh, a different length of the culvert, um, culvert can mean different things. You can also have a culvert within the river and, and, and you can implement such things in the river like culverts and, uh, and uh, pipes and different structures within the river can be correctly identified within it. So I think that's a difference there. You have a point source, you can implement that in, in the hydraulics of the, of the model, and you can also implement structures within the river system um, to, to, to complement the uh, geometry. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for this uh, fantastic Q&A. Um, so we're at the end of our webinar session. Uh, please feel free to follow up directly uh, with Eva and Matthias via the contact details shown on the screen. And I would like to thank all attendees for joining today. We hope to see you in our additional webinars on the Valoring, in the Valoring Water series. And thank you again, Eva and Matthias, for a fantastic uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.